What is going on, everybody? Brent Abel here, goldballhunting.com. That young squire over there. Oh, squires. <laughs> that's a new one. Oh, that's a new one. <laughs> anyway, the great Jeff Jacklich. Uh, and today we, we got something new for you, right? We want to really help you guys become consistent shot makers. And we got something new we want to talk about how we can help you do that. So stay to the end of this episode because uh, if you're making a, a few errors out there when you shouldn't, then this is an episode you want to listen to all the way to the end. So the big question is this. How are tennis players like us who never played on the tour, weren't incredible juniors, or maybe got a late start to the game, how do we consistently compete at our highest skill level without having to grind through endless hours of encore practice time and still be in the hunt for the victory match after match? That is the question, and Gold Ball Hunting gives you the answers by helping you eliminate your skill level range so that you build a strong foundation of confidence. My name is Jeff Jacklich, and along with Brent Abel, my partner, welcome to Gold Ball Hunting. Well, Jeffrey, all right, what is, uh, what's up there, dude? Oh, I'm sorry, it's another beautiful day here in Northern California. Chris, cool morning, fall morning. Sorry. Why are you apologizing? <laughs> are you are you just assuming that you're the only person in the world who's got good weather today? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Yeah. Could be. Yeah, the Northern California yeah. thing. The Indian summer is kind of kind of coming to an end, but slowly. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, just well, you know, just expressing some gratitude after the go. last uh, month of October with the you know PG and E and firestorms right. and all the you know stuff. So. For those of you um, just, unfamiliar with PG&E, it's our, it's our beloved, our hate-love relationship with Pacific Gas and Electric, who seem to be up to, uh, I think it would be called CYA, covering their, their booties on, uh, yes. <laughs> on some kind of insurance deal. I don't know. Anyway, they're shutting power down when yeah. Yeah. maybe it doesn't need to be in so uh, we'll look. We'll 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 get off our little political <clears throat> um, thing here on on PG and E. And well, look, we we got a beautiful yeah. day brewing here in the desert. It's it's calling for high eighties, maybe even tickling ninety today here at around three o'clock, wow. four o'clock. Um, when we're done with the recording, I'm going out in the grass, going to hit some with Owen, my man, Mister Mister McIntosh. Uh, <laughs> it's got so uh, he's a character. Anyway. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Grass courts are playing like just like a billiard table right now. It's ridiculous. You know, I what was it the <laughs> other day? I can't wait. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sunday, <can't> <laughs> Sunday, I got back out for the out there for the first time, and they just what they do down here is um, they shut down the grass courts to do the reseeding and all that stuff around mid September, and really kind of they just lay low for about six weeks. They just reopened. Uh, a few days before I got out there on Sunday, this last Sunday, today is Tuesday. So that's just, what, three days ago? Uh, two days ago, I guess. And uh, and so I walked out there. I took the picture, which I put up on Facebook. Welcome back. Yeah. And, I, I, you know, maybe <laughs> half of the people that commented said, um, are those artificial cords? And I said, <laughs> I said and then I, I kept going back with this thing because there was a, there's a there's a great baseball player way back in the day in the 70s, and right when baseball was starting to move away from natural grass to the artificial grass, and making these just these god awful concrete baseball stadiums, just these big things of concrete and right. artificial grass, and there was this guy who was just a unique dude, this guy named Dick Allen, and heck of a player, great hitter, but there was once a uh, a, a guy, I can't remember what, how, how it came up after a game, but a reporter asked him, so Dick, uh, you know, what do you think of this about this artificial grass? And he just said, if a horse can't eat it, then I don't want to play on it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, so good. That's so good. So good. So anyway, I was responding back. Yeah. I didn't, ha I hadn't quite remembered the quote as I started responding back. And I said, I just told guys, well, yeah, I mean, a, a horse can eat it. And a couple guys went, huh? And I went, it's grass. Yeah. A horse can eat grass. Think. Right. <laughs> anyway, 
we've we've quickly gotten off. Well, here's one. Here's one for you, Ian Tyriak. You know, and uh, you know, talked about the three surfaces. You know, right? Uh, you know, hard hard grass and clay. And uh, his response was, you know, hard courts were made for parking lots. Grass courts were made for cows, and clay was made for tennis. You know, that was, okay, well, that was his feeling. Perfect. Feeling. <laughs> perfect. Um, all right, well, listen, JJ, we're going to talk about uh, how to become a consistent shot maker today and how we're going to help you guys do that. And we've kind of gone through, before we started recording, we've actually spent, dang, almost an hour kind of going yeah. – Kind of going over, and we would love to hear your comments today uh, at, at the end of the episode. So if you're over at YouTube, uh, be thinking about kind of these two questions that we want to ask you. And if you're over at uh, the iTunes, just, you know, you can shoot us an email, let us know at goldballhunting.com. But yep. really what, what Jeff and I came up with is is this title to a course, which is, how to confidently hit four or more high quality shots in a row in every point without the frustration of making another bonehead error. And so there's really two parts of that that we want to help you guys with. Number one is we do want to fulfill your desires, right? What's the, what's the thing that we all want to be able to do um, in terms of staying in a point, right? I mean, it's not like every time we hit a serve, it doesn't come back or we hit a serve and the biggest, fattest, chubbiest <clears throat> opportunity sitting there. And obviously it's a, it's a put away opportunity, but the reality right. is there's lots of times when we need to be able to hit X number of shots in a row, high quality shots. We're not talking about, you know, laser beam Roger fed forehands, but we're talking about shots that are high quality enough that, um, you're not risking the lines, you're not risking the net, and that does not sort of set up your opponent on a silver platter, right? I mean, to where you're right. not sort of having to resort to becoming the, ulti ul the ultimate pusher. And, and yet, that's kind of the desire we want, but there's always, there's always a, a, a lurking fear. There's always a, <laughs> you know, a, a, another voice in the shoulder that's, that's kind of said, saying, hey, dude, well, you know, you really, maybe you can't hit this third one in a row, so you might, right. might want to really go for it right now. And the next thing you do is you go, okay, and you go for it, and dang it, bonehead air. Yeah. So yeah, that that little that little voice on the shoulder usually has that. It, it's that. It's that. Hey, I got this great idea. <laughs> that's right. How about if we do? this thing right that's right i saw rafa hey, do it. Okay. i saw rafa do it yesterday and it worked for him it looked cool <laughs> right <laughs> so um so that's kind of where we're at this week right guys is trying to help you get confidently consistent and we kind of picked out four because four is like if you can if you can hit four shots in a row serve the next ball the next ball the next ball you know what man you might be going on the tour or at least some kind of a tour. Maybe it's a senior tour where you don't actually make a lot of money, but you start getting these little boxes that have these little balls inside them. Um, right. <laughs> there's a bronze, there's a silver and there's a gold. And, and I'll yeah. tell you, man, once you get your first little box, um, Jeff, go get one of the boxes there in front of you. <laughs> we'll wait. We'll wait for you. Uh, it doesn't matter which one. I just buy the middle one there. Just, just, just go ahead and pick out one. <coughs> there you go. So there those, we go. those little guys there, and and then inside they have this little ball. It's, I'm sure yeah. it's not pure gold. It's got to be some kind of a plated thing. Anyway, so once you get one of those, it's like, it's it's kind of like man. Yeah. Let's do this again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah let's do this again. <laughs> so. Um, and the way that you get one of those boxes is, well, you got to stop making bonehead errors and you got to be able to start to <laughs> actually string a few shots in a row and not just, not just on occasion, but, um, you know, point right. after point after point. So, you know, for me, oh God, I mean, I keep going back to Tom Stowe. And so obviously he's the guy in my life, in my tennis life, not only as a player, but also as a coach. And he was the guy who really kind of gave me the principles of even before I ever hit a ball, I mean, I just remember like the first few sessions with him. Every day we would go out there, and again, I was I was the 
I was the guy, one of four, with these three other top players. And, and yet, we did the same thing every time we'd go out. We would not hit a tennis ball, but we'd go through these rehearsing drills. You know, we'd kind of get warmed up, and then we'd go, and, and it was like, uh, well, it was, it was like the article I sent you last night about uh, Daniel Coyle that he wrote back in 2007 um, about the Spartak Tennis Club outside of Moscow. Right. You know, the, the, right. the one crappy indoor court in the winter. And, uh, and the whole thing, and look, we're getting a little off, maybe not, but, but, but the whole thing about building myelination in terms of the neural pathways and all that stuff. But right. one thing that one thing they did that Mr. Stowe did, and whether Mr. Stowe had any idea, well, this was back in the early '80s, so who knows? Maybe maybe Mr. Stowe had some connection with you know Russia. I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> he might have. He's kind a of double agent. Kind of a crazy guy. <laughs> but. Um, they're, and, and, and they do this at Spartak in, 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 in Moscow, and they also, and, and Mr. Stowe would do this, where we would get out there and we would we'd go through these movements, these, these rehearsing uh, forehands, backhands, and, and sort of then we'd sort of move in and we, we would rehearse an approach shot, a forehand, and, uh, you know, and all this stuff. And, but there was always these three principles that were involved, and the three principles were they got to happen on every shot in the game. doesn't matter if it's a serve, it's an overhead, if it's a dropper, if it's this or that, blah, blah, blah. It's got to happen. And, and so once he gave me that, that's when I started to become a consistent shot maker and started to win. I mean, that's, that's, that's right. why we're here, right? We're here right. because we want to win more matches. I don't care if it's singles or doubles or and or doubles. We want to win, and and obviously, if you're making bonehead errors there, because just like you said, oh boy, the voice is popping off and just going, right? Hey, man, <laughs> wouldn't this be awesome right now? Because right. there's that one person over there watching you right yeah. now, and just think if you did that right now, just think of just right. think, just think of all the cool stuff. Yeah, and you know, and, and you, you you hit the back fence with that forehand, and right. next thing you know is now you're frustrated. You're frustrated because you can't get rid of the voice, but you're frustrated because it's it's yet another unforced, purely unforced error that is just, it could be avoided. It could be avoided. Um, right. So what about you? I mean, you know, I mean, it took me a while with Mr. Stowe because I, I just, I, I thought too much about stroke technique with him. And he did work on stroke technique, but I think subtly what he was really trying to do with me is to realize that, Here's all you need. And like we talked about yesterday, he was delayering me like crazy. He was just taking stuff right. away and said, "Look, this, you're never going to wear this costume again." All right, this this, this thing's in the in the trash <laughs> right. pile. <laughs> you didn't look good in it anyway, so we're just going to take it away from you. But he was right. he was delayering me, and and yet at the same time, he was sort of giving me a new way of thinking about um, how to hit the tennis ball, but. But less about stroke technique and more about these other three these other three things that that just he kept harping on every time I saw him, and you know the result for me was winning. Right, the result for me right after he passed away was the next year was that was that first gold ball and doubles. You know, and look that was that was a big deal. It was a full sixty four draw. Huge. I mean, it was it was. And there were there were you know if you were that's, if that's you were back in the seven day, matches, it, seven it, matches, it was ridiculous. Right? Well, six matches in sixty four, seven matches yeah, in one twenty eight. Uh, still, it felt like seven matches, but and we were <laughs> unseated, right? They had no respect for us, and uh, you know we played the number five seeds in the first round. Well, my partner Robbie Olson was a little ticked that we didn't get seated, and the guy who we played, ironically, in the first round, the number five seed, one of the guys. Was the guy who de- who did the seedings, and, <laughs> and and this guy was from Northern California. Robbie was ticked. He was just and you know this was Rob Olson, great athlete, played basketball at Cal, and was like a world class swimmer. This guy was just a jock and a half, right. and uh, he had an overhead Jeff that was it was just loud. 
I mean, loud. If you didn't have tinnitus, then after a couple of these, you did because it was just <laughs> boom. Anyway, um, and so yeah, I mean, we just we just went through the whole tournament. I mean, we did lose a couple of sets along the way, but um, man, it was like it was like I just like especially in the finals, I felt like I could not miss a ball. Yeah, it was like it was like I knocked off the voice, knocked off the little dude over there. And just every ball looked to me like, you know what? I can make this shot over there without having to push or without having to, you know, give up anything and trust that if it comes back, I can do it again. And, 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 and that to right. me, I think, is one of the reasons why players get a little, a little jumpy as the point goes longer and longer because they start not trusting. Man, I'm not sure that I can stay in this point for another shot another let's call it let's condition it a high quality shot again not a winner not a not right. a fed like forehand but to not where you're just you're you're, you're kind of getting nervous and squeezing the rack and handle and just pushing the thing like crazy so yeah i mean for, so what about you i mean me, i mean it's it's at some point i know i know you talked yesterday about giuseppe and um but yeah, I mean, yeah, at some me, point you started that, the, that, having the ability. If you had to stay back, you could stay back in the baseline. And you know, I, I know it's right. certain, certain volley, California bred dude, and all that. But you know, as we get older, yeah, you, you still got to return serve, and that means you're standing back by the baseline. Okay, so. yeah, and you, <laughs> you may gotta, and you may get you stuck. Gotta, the guy might have a good enough serve to where you actually can't get in behind it. So right. Um, so so for me, the big that big epiphany moment of that that I actually have to execute more than one ball, more than two balls and just go for a winner, but actually execute a plan, actually execute something that's going to yield the opportunity to finish the point. And that takes more than one ball. <laughs> and amazingly, it takes more than two balls. So, but was there some point when you were coming up as a player where you were trying to Ding the serve and get rid of it, and the point would be done. Yeah, totally. That was that was uh, you know my first uh, you know two years at Kenyatta um, under Rich Anderson. Um, were that that two year period was a, just a major maturity in in my understanding of the game for sure. Um, Eye opening for sure. Um, crossing all the you know fitness. Becoming a real student of the game, not just not just being told what to do, but actually starting to look and watch other players and see what they're doing. Why is that guy winning all these tournaments? Maybe I should watch that guy, right? Um, and so for me, though, it came down to uh, you know playing um, playing the Mountain View Open, which you know, as you know, was like just a well attended event. That was, I mean, I know that event, uh, normally the men's open was, was not a 64 draw. That was a 128 draw normally, I think, as I recall. Um, and the top guys, you know, in NorCal were, you know, it, you know, it, it was a legendary tournament, you know, and, um, uh, I played, uh, uh, Steve Stefanke, uh, second round and, um, and Rich and I came up with a plan. And um, I simply stayed on script. For some reason that day, <laughs> I stayed on script and I started to see, once I saw the result of constructing the point, doing this, hitting again, you know, three to four high quality balls in a row, not, not, not with the pressure of trying to get out of the point, but actually stay in the point. Um, and not hitting lines, but but actually just looking for this one target that we had identified and then just doing that over and over and over again. So for me, that epiphany of, of winning that match because of this tactic, because um, the tactic was not about, you know, one and done. Um, you're going to have to hit your volley a little closer to the line, Jeff. No, that, that had nothing to do with it, you know, so really – um, for me, it was that uh, that moment of of. Well, you I know. think that brings up a, a, a situation that if you're playing tournaments and 
And e even if you're playing league matches where we know the NTRP rating system is not the most accurate, and, and even though you are, if your, your opponent's got the same rating label as you do, or even though in a tournament you've got your, you, you guys were born on the same day if you're playing an age group tournament, that you know, there's a chance that that opponent could be on paper better than you are. Right. Right. And on that day, Steve Stefanke on paper, I think, if you know, betting people would have gone, well, you know, we got, I'm putting my money on Steve Stefanke. And so what happens right. lots of lots of times is when you're when 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 you're the opponent of that player who's supposed to win, it's easy to think, well, I've got to do something here to not stay in the point. Right. And right. I'm going to have to play big. I'm going to have to play big. For, I'm going to have to play good for him too, because I want him to respect me. Yeah. I hope I play good for him. My, you know, the seed. Right. You know, all that. Yeah, all those well, emotional. That's, that's just that's just garbage. You know, the, the emotional right BS. The emotional right. BS. Yeah. That's that voice again over here. Yeah. <laughs> and again, we're not talking about just just going out there pushing just to stay in the point. We're talking about we're talking yeah. about hitting high quality shots that um, that we can that we can repeat over and over and and trust that well if i'm at four i've hit one two three four mm, i think i can hit a fifth one if i have to the chances are right. if you hit four in a row that <laughs> you will have won the point by then um so right. look i uh, think I, I think too it, hit, it hits this it hits this thing too that um you know there's the the term now is um uh shot tolerance or shot threshold you know, within a point. Mm -hmm. And, and so it begs the question, you know, are you, are you just one shot away from finding out where your opponent's shot tolerance is? Are you one, one stroke away? And is it, I tell you what, I've played enough matches in my career to find out that when you start to hit that three to five mark, you're going to find out there's a lot of players Three shots, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like that's you've hit their mark, and and so sometimes we're so concerned about and and not confident in our own ability to to just execute four high quality shots in a row that we never actually see the reality that it's just just can we just do that one more time, and and the dynamics of the match just change you know drastically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, look, guys, uh, we're going to keep talking about this again tomorrow. Uh, about how you can actually make that transformation, In, meaning that if you're if, if you're if you're struggling right now to <laughs> shot tolerance, or if you're struggling because you just don't have the confidence that you can stay in a point, you know, and it could be it it, it could be that some of it could be fitness, could be. Some players might think, well, you know what, I got to get out of this point either because I've got this horrific injury from playing college football. You know, which is <laughs> right. okay. Well, we right. want to well, we want to give you a different uh, a different way of hitting, not a different way of hitting the ball, but a different spot to hit the ball. Um, but but if you're just not confident that you can actually hit four high quality shots in a row, point after point after point, then look for an email tomorrow or dig in. However, you're getting our notifications, whether it's on YouTube and when we ever we publish something, you get notification. Whatever it is. But I think you'll really enjoy tomorrow's episode, uh, episode because um, we want to help you start to believe that, 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 that this could happen for you. And, and once it starts happening, that the results, the winning results, start to all of a sudden pop up. And you know what? It's just way more fun. It's way <laughs> more fun to play at this level up here and actually not be thinking, oh, God, I'm going to get my butt beat 0-0 today. Actually, be playing up at this level and and competing like crazy and being confident <clears throat> and starting to get the W's and um, just kind of a fun thing. So, uh, yeah. with that, uh, hey guys, before we ask Jeff to tell us what we'd like you to do, uh, free coaching call, right? We we we're offering Jeff and I are offering a, a private free coaching call, 10, 12, 15 minutes, whatever it takes. Three of us get on the phone. And what we ask is you bring the one thing in your game right now that you think is holding you back from getting the winning result that you want. Could be singles, could be doubles. And uh, so let's, let's get in the phone, let's yak about it, and we'll come up with uh, um, a path to put you on. 
to help you start getting that result. The way to get on that <clears> phone call, yeah. just go over to goldballhunting.com. Uh, drop in a first name and email address, and then uh, click the button, and you will get access to our online calendar scheduler. You get to pick a date and time that works best for you. Jeffrey, what do we want to find folks to do right now? <clears throat> like us, share us, please subscribe. Let us know what you think down below, really. Let us know. iTunes and Stitcher, rate and review. Goldballhunting.com. It's fun to share us. Spread the word. Yeah, and like I said in the very beginning today is uh, we'd love to hear from you. Kind of two things. YouTube, uh, comments area, wherever you are. Maybe it's oh, maybe we post, uh, post this on Facebook today. Or let us know at goldballhunting.com, the email address. But want to know two things. Number one is, you know, what's, what's your biggest desire? You know, what is the end result that you want uh, in terms of being a consistent shot maker? point after point after point and then the other thing is to find out from you guys you know what's kind of your big concern you know if you get to you know shot number four in the point what's your big concern or maybe you got a concern that bef you can't even get to number four because fill in the blank right. we, so we want to hear those those two things from you guys guys with that get out there today help someone else have a spectacular day jeff we're we're doing this again tomorrow can't wait.